few days ago, I posted a video where I gave my unboxing and first impressions of this absolutely massive behemoth of a thing here. This is Valve's Steam Deck. And for those that don't know, this thing is effectively a fully fledged computer, but in a handheld form factor. And the primary use case for this, as you can probably tell, is gaming. You've got your full array of controls. You have two track pads here for moving a mouse around should you need to do that. And it does a really good job in terms of gaming. This thing is not super duper powerful, right? You're not going to compare this to a proper gaming laptop. But when you factor in that you're going to be gaming on a 7-inch display that runs at 1280 by 800, that's not a super high resolution, although on a screen this size, it looks really, really good. 60 hertz. You're not trying to, to do anything too crazy so gaming performance is about as good as you could possibly expect i'm playing games like horizon zero dawn on medium ish settings and running just fine staying over 30 fps at any given moment and it works really really well but there's another aspect of the steam deck that i said i would try and cover on this channel an aspect that i think is a better fit for this channel like i said a minute ago this is a fully fledged computer this is running an AMD APU, right? This is okay, this is computer specs, right? This is not a Nintendo Switch. This is not a PlayStation handheld. This is a computer, and it runs a pretty heavily modified distribution of Linux, Arch Linux. They call it Steam OS, but it is still Linux. And in fact, you can switch to a full desktop mode on this device. So in this video, we're gonna kinda get our feet wet. We're gonna look at the desktop mode and I'm gonna give a quick overview of what's possible in this mode. And I want you guys to leave in the comments things you wanna see me test. I'm gonna test a few things myself, things that were interesting to me, but leave more in the comments and I'll make a follow-up video showing even more stuff. And it's really, really simple to get into desktop mode and I'm gonna show you that in a moment. But first, I'm gonna show you how we're going to be kind of capturing this and kind of how I, I envision using this thing as a full computer. What you really need is a USB-C hub because of course this thing does charge over USB-C as you can maybe make out there. It's a little blurry. This thing doesn't want to focus that quickly. But at any rate, it's USB-C and you can use a hub and then plug in a mouse and a keyboard, an HDMI port on your USB hub potentially, and you can basically have your own little docking station. You're gaming on it, but you let's say this is your only computer. That's kind of the idea that I'm pushing here. Could this be your only computing device? You finish up gaming, you plug this thing into a hub, and boom, you're on a TV, you're on a monitor, and you have a gaming, or rather a computing <laughs> setup. So today we're going to be using a USB-C hub like this one from Anchor, right? Because you need, like I said, HDMI, some USB. You need power in, so preferably get a hub that can supply enough power through. Some of these will slow down your power source. But other than that, you're pretty much ready to go. So I have plugged my Steam Deck into a hub, and I've got a mouse, a keyboard, and I've got actually Ethernet as well works totally fine. And then, like I said, an HDMI cable, which is running into a USB capture card on my computer so that when I go to picture and picture there is my Steam Deck. So if you want to go into desktop mode from here, it's actually really, really simple. You're going to click on your Steam button. You're going to click on power, and then you're going to hit switch to desktop. And that is pretty much all you need to do, and it's going to take over the rest from there. It's going to load for a moment, and then it's going to come into what is going to look pretty recognizable to you as a desktop setup. Now we've loaded in, and there we go. Let's go back full screen so that you can really see this. Now I've done a little bit of customization on mine, but not very much at all. But let's kind of walk through this and see what we have here. So on the far left side here, this is our app launcher. And this is basically, if you're used to Windows, this is your start menu. It's pretty much what you would expect to see. You have a categorization here of your applications, sleep, restart, shutdown, and then there's a universal search as well. Works really well. You can see that, that I actually have Microsoft Edge installed and that runs exactly like you'd expect. You have a file manager, which looks a lot like you know Windows Explorer. All your locations here on the left looks really, really familiar. In fact, I can delete these files. I can highlight them and click delete on my keyboard and boom, they're gone. In terms of Explorer, I really like that I can click on network. I can go to SMB. I can type in the IP address of my Windows computer and I can actually access my shared over network folders. 
just like that. So that makes moving ROMs and so forth over should you be doing that so much easier. You can minimize, you can maximize, you can hit the X button there. An interesting one too is there's the Discover application which allows you to install third-party applications and there are a ton. You can kind of get an idea of what's possible here by what you might see here. KDN Live is a video editor. KTorrent is a torrenting application. Let's click on applications. Let's go to graphics. Let's see just kind of a quick look here. We've got several different photo editors. How about GIMP, a fully fledged Photoshop competitor? And that's pretty much the easiest way to install applications. And then I also have pin here, my console, which is just a terminal, which you may use here and there, probably not going to use it a ton. And then there is the settings, which look like this. And it, yeah, it's a full desktop setting type application, something like you would be used to seeing on Windows. And while we're kind of talking about settings, let's talk about something that's kind of important to this whole process. You've got your Steam Deck, you plug it into your USB-C hub, into the HDMI, you go into desktop mode, and you're going to see something a little bit confusing. So the desktop is actually going to be on your deck itself, and your external monitor is just going to be a wallpaper. Nothing going on there because it's treating that monitor as a secondary display. So what you need to do here is back in the settings, you need to go down to display. You need to go to your HDMI to USB, whatever that is, the one that isn't laptop display. Laptop screen is the one on the deck. So go to the other screen. Make sure it's enabled, obviously. Make sure it is set to primary. Set your resolution to whatever it needs to be. In this case, it's 1920 by 1080. Then go back to your laptop screen and then just disable it. That's what I have mine set up as so that by doing that, my external monitor is on and working. The Steam Deck is actually just a black screen, nothing going on. Over here on this side, you've got notifications, which shows me that there is an update available. Let's click on that. It should open up the Discover app and pull up my updates. And it says that I have updates available for a few of these applications, like some uh, video editor, Citra, a couple of emulators I have installed. Let's go ahead and install those. We'll let that run in the background. Then you see Steam there running in the background, which you do need Steam running because without Steam, your trackpads don't work very well. Although if you're using a mouse and keyboard like I am, not the end of the world. Updates are already done nice and fast. I like this clipboard button here. It actually shows what you have copied and pasted. That's a pretty cool feature. Volume, Bluetooth is obviously on board. Recent devices, I could plug in a flash drive to that hub and that would work as well. Plugged into Ethernet, as you can see there. Status and notifications, a calendar, and then I believe this button just shows your desktop. So from looking at this, I mean, this is a fully fledged desktop situation. So to give you an idea of what kind of like moment to moment performance you're gonna have, let's jump back over and let's just launch a few simple applications for example. So let's do Microsoft Edge first. And what's cool about this is that this is not some weird mobile version of Edge. I actually opened it twice there, I believe. I must have clicked it twice and I, oh, nope, that was weird. Okay, we're only open up once. We saw how quick that opened. Anyways, this is not some sort of like mobile version of Edge. This is the full desktop Edge. Your extensions are going to be there. Your bookmark sync, all that stuff is going Going to be just fine. Let's jump over to YouTube and let's just click on a video here and you'll get an idea. Let me mute this just in case audio tries to come through. And you'll get a pretty good idea here of what kind of performance you're dealing with. Could you use this as your primary computer if you want to watch YouTube in the web browser? I think you absolutely could. This is going to handle playing 1080p video just fine. No problem at all. Obviously, this is not coming through in uh, you know uh, 2160p but let's go ahead and turn it on and see if it's able to actually encode it and yeah i think it's handling it just fine so something like youtube high resolution no problem at all what about that video editor that i mentioned kden live i don't know how i'm supposed to say that i'm going to go with kden live this is a pretty fully featured video editor from my understanding i've only messed with it very very briefly but you can see there how quickly it did open I don't have any video files to throw in here, but I can show you one more thing and then kind of tie this back in. So another interesting thing that you can actually do is you can actually install OBS Studio. And if you wanted to stream from this thing, that might be possible. You can definitely record gameplay of a game from this. So I actually tested this just the other day. I loaded up OBS. I set it up as you saw to just capture my screen. Then in desktop mode, I loaded up a game, started recording in OBS, and then I actually trimmed the clip down in Caden Live, and I tweeted it 
out for everyone to see and I can show you that here now. So as you can see here, this is a clip that I recorded on the Steam Deck via OBS in desktop mode and then edited down with that Kden Live. I think whenever I actually exported it, I think my settings were like really, really low bitrate. I didn't mess with it, I just let it go. Encoding took a pretty long time for something to clip this short. Might have, might have taken as long as it is basically to play the clip, so not super fast encoding, but it worked. And it recorded my audio through the microphones and everything worked as well as you could possibly expect something like that to work. What about GIMP, which is a, like I said, a, a competitor to Photoshop, a free open source Photoshop sort of alternative. We'll let this load in real time so that you can see. It usually takes a decent amount of time on an actual computer, so no surprise there. That was actually not too shabby, and there you go. There is your photo editor. I don't think I have any pictures on here to edit either, but you can kind of imagine how this would work. It's a fully featured photo editor. So I think that's kind of where we're gonna stop for now. You have a general idea of how this desktop functions, what sort of performance you're seeing in regular day-to-day -day programs. Now it's your turn, drop some comments down below. There's already been some good suggestions in a community post, but I wanna add a few more so that I can really round this thing out. So yeah, drop some comments down below, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.